here I have the back roughed in and uh, this is all for hand carving and I drew a center line and I'm using the shave horse with a spoke shave to taper this to the top edge in the center. This area here will be remain flat but it'll gradually taper in towards the middle and the back after this is carved the back will be tapered towards the front the front carving is relatively flat and when you use a spoke shave or when you're doing any carving you have to observe the grain of the wood this area here I can't uh, carve this way I'll have to flip it and push this way so I'm going with the grain and it won't be biting in this center line will give me perspective as, uh, to be able to judge how far to go and whether or not I am going towards the center The headboard for the backrest should be carved before it's steam bent and you can see I have the layout lines drawn and these are just uh, lines for uh, where you're going to control the cutting and here you can see I had removed the material and the way you want to go about cutting this is you want to start by uh, cutting a perimeter on the lines and this this will be so that uh, when you're carving with the gouge it won't tear out so you want to start with the inner line you can use an exacto for doing this but I have a chisel that's made for making this type of a cut you don't have to go real deep with this cut initially as you're using the gouge you'll continue running this line to remove the chips from the gouge then you want to take a smaller smaller gouge I have two small ones here and you start by making a cut repetitively from this line to the groove that you cut Then I'm using my knife again to remove these chips. After you use the small one, go to a larger gouge and you'll continue until you get it deeper and then you smooth that all of the smaller gouge marks with a larger gouge you'll continue until you get the carving like this this is ready for a final sanding and a little bit of rounding on the the back side 
and this will be on the shave horse taken down to a center line and the front part remains flat where the carving is but as it gradually comes away it will move towards a center line and I draw on there it's kind of worn off I draw a center line this gives me a reference so that I can carve from both sides and hit the uh, the mark here is my steam source this is a Wagner steamer I've had a number of these uh, there's different type I have a Hoover and uh, these you can find at Goodwill, Salvation Army, Habitat and uh, real cheap maybe like ten dollars so this one works fine and this will be the steam source for my wood box steamer. Measuring the length what I need to do is have <coughs> the bending jig open I have a three-quarter inch board here. That will be the width of the comb. The jack will come up against the bottom. I'll have a plate under here. And we need to get the overall length plus what we need excess for welding. And I calculated three inches of that. So we're at 25 and a quarter we're going to leave a little play so we'll add three onto that we're going to go 29 inches four pieces cut at 29 inches Here's the bending jig with the hydraulic cylinder and we're going to do a dry bend on a board. Um, I'm expecting it to break. And my concern is because nothing's permanently fixed, everything's made that it could slide or move. You have in the cylinder in the center might cause this to teeter one way or the other or the, the ram to kick out. So the option might be using two cylinders at, in unison and that's uh, doable too. These are not welded that I um, in a fixed location I can slide these further out. So right now we're going to crank the jack, everything's set. This is the length of the comb of the chair. Uh, any space, I used the thread on the jack to take the space up. And this jack has a six inch uh, drive, six inch push. I did put a piece of metal on the underside here. Uh, right there it broke. Hopefully when we pull the piece out of the steam box it'll do the bending rather than the breaking.
Yep, this is a four ton jack and it just snapped in two other locations. One, two, three. Three places it broke. So it looks like uh, one jack will work. Uh, next step will be bending this steamed comb. So the dry bend went well. Well, it's holding its bend. <laughs> it's been a half hour in the steam box. So make sure you get it in the right direction. about one minute to make this press. And it's tight. Bent, no cracking. Looks like it's going to be a good one. Here is the bending jig for the comb. And uh, this has been in the form uh, setting or curing for two weeks and uh, I probably could have went shorter but it was not needed so I le just left it set in the jig. The jig is made out of two by tens and they're double stacked. This arch that's cut into it, it is a five inch arc and I have it at 31 inches from end to end. The comb measures 29 inches. So uh, all that you need to do is scribe this arc at this distance 5 inches. And that will give you the proper bend for the comb. Okay, let's take it out of the form and see how much spring back it has. You expect to get a little bit. So this moved about five eighths of an inch. Okay, that's perfect. If you want it tighter, you'll make a tighter bend and still expect to get a little bit of spring back when it comes out of its form. Okay, this is ready to go onto its chair. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye bye.